Mike Ismati here in Athabasca, Alberta. Um, I had to move around the house to try and find a room with uh, not too much light because, uh, uh, well, we're having a great sunny day, but it's not great for recording. So I'm uh, hiding in the sewing room right now. And uh, welcome to module two. Um, uh, before, we, before we even dive in, I was going to give you a preview of what's ahead. But Mike's done a very good job of it, laying out the content challenge. So I thought I would go over some of the patterns I saw last week and some, uh, maybe make some suggestions for this week for your activities on the discussion boards and then the exercises and uh, engaging with each other in, in that peer learning piece that we're encouraging. And um, first of all, it's very, <laughs> I was very busy. Uh, I get, uh, I'm using the app on my phone and uh, I think every eight minutes I'm getting a posting <clears throat> from someone on one of those elements within the course. So it's uh, kept me and Mike very busy. But I think uh, about an hour ago I was all caught up. So uh, I started to write down my notes and think about what to say uh, here today. So on the main discussion board, lots of activity that's pretty heavy, a little bit theoretical, people exploring uh, nuances in theory. And I could see that being quite challenging for some people. And, uh, but there's a good chunk of people that are, have dove right in there. And one of the reasons for that is that, that that first module is asking all the big questions and everybody wants to get to those answers or get moving on them pretty quickly. And I can understand that. Uh, we're gonna just step back and slow down just a little bit now with each of the next six modules because they look at specific issues like land, local food, energy, social care, finance, livability. And um, in each of those, um, we get a, it's a little more focused so we can, we can tie down the theory and practice a little tighter. And I'm, I'm hoping that'll make people who have more of a practice background or who are just exploring experientially from the bottom up for the first time some of these ideas, that they'll, they'll feel uh, comfortable uh, stepping in and I'm going to give you some ideas about how you can participate because I noticed about about you know a third of the people are in and happening and engaged but I think there's a good third of lurkers out there there's another third who haven't even started I don't know where they are but uh, we'll be waiting for them and uh, so lots of activity some heavy stuff lots of fun on the visual board uh, hello to the visual learners I, I am I'm having fun uh, going through all those with you. Um, it's a little easier to jump in there maybe. So people might want to start there and just, you know, think of some image that that arises as you work through the material. Uh, in module two, uh, you can start doing that at any point in the in the module, things that, that resonate with you. And uh, if you need to, to do a second visual, go ahead. Some people were into that. Um, there's also some analysis going on that's quite quite as complex there as it is on the discussion board. So, uh, very interesting um, two sets of opportunities. The reflection exercise, the MLP. Uh, some questions about um, you know one or two people did such a good job. What what else could I add? What else could I say? But I keep thinking that you know we all hear and see slightly different things. And as you begin to read the multiple uh, responses, you, you see the nuance in each one. And I'm hoping also you begin to see how those three levels, although that's artificial and it's a, it's a strategic kind of way of, of seeing, begin to uh, in, engage. Well, here you go. I'll just turn that off, <laughs> sorry. That people begin to engage using the model to try and order their thoughts or order the reality around them. And there's a couple of great examples that Mike pointed to. Uh, in his introduction where people really were able to apply it in their own context also. Um, so, lots of conversations. Some people having really deep conversations. I'm sure offline conversations are engaging. Part of uh, what, what's good about coming here is that we hope when you leave, you're gonna have a couple new people to talk with. And that takes some initiative on your part too. So, uh, don't be shy. <laughs> Just give it a try. Um, so 
let's go over this second module. We said there's lots of room for your experience, your challenges, your questions. You can work in the discussion area, pick a thread that resonates with you. Maybe some of these uh, more theoretical threads are, are, are a little more intimidating. So pick one that's more, that just seems to appeal to you. Maybe it's talking about some aspect that somebody else hadn't raised. There's some wonderful ones. There's issues on race, on spirituality, on uh, lifestyle and livelihood. There were interesting interventions on indigeneity and tons of stuff on gender. And we, there's lots of places to dig and work and, and enter into the debate there and not just worry about the big concepts and some of the uh, things that we're, we're all moving towards grappling with and then applying. Um, I thought there was a very uh, good strategy by a couple of people. Uh, Susan Rose Ludbrook, she just posed a question rather than, she made a statement and then she said, what do you think about this? What ideas do you have about this? Well, that's not a bad strategy to <laughs> both to find some friends who are think like you or just people who can, you know, you're asking the hive mind out there to sort of contribute to some issue that you want to get lots of ideas about. So how do you do X in your place, you know, et cetera. So I'll turn it around and I'll say, you can suggest to maybe on the help board, go there and suggest a couple of ideas to us as facilitators, like what other things could we do to try and make it uh, more comfortable for people who are at different levels of engagement with the material and the ideas and to invite them in. Um, I, I even thought, some people who are bold, I think could just, you know, you can email another person. If you like what they're talking about, you can find their name. It's listed in the email list. Go down, don't mail all 500 students or 1,000 students, please. But go down, find their name, Mike Ismani. Okay, send them an email and say, hey, I liked what you said. I just wanted to talk to you on the side about it. So um, think about that. Um, I really noticed people helping each other with the visuals, with text on visuals, with looking links to sources, sharing uh, material that they have, acknowledging other people's experiences, other people's approaches, other people's lives. And those kinds of solidarities go a long way and it's a big part of the course. And um, it, it, it makes, I think it makes us all feel good that, that it's a welcoming place that way. The MLP essay, well, uh, that framework, are you gonna be asked to apply that in different ways throughout the whole course? So don't run away from it right away. Dig in a little bit. A couple people asked me for some academic pieces and I posted them. If people want them, I can put, probably put, uh, make them more widely available. Um, the thing is that it's a huge field of social technical systems transition and I don't want you to get deeply bogged down in it. I think where Mike and I are coming from and John and, and Pat and others is saying, this is a helpful perspective up to a point. It has its limitations, but it also helps us organize this mess of empirical engagement that we have to make at different levels when we're trying to create change. So um, I think you're gonna see it more clearly as we, as we focus down on specific topics, so like food you'll be able to see, well, what are the food regimes? How do they relate to each other from seed to industrial agriculture to transportation to marketing control, consumerism? And you begin to see how uh, any kind of counter movement has to engage at very different levels uh, in, in an attempt to change, systematically change that, that regime or to, uh, I think the phrase was to not undermine it, but to delegitimate it or also just to weaken it and change it. Um, module two, no, I talked about everything but module two, but Mike's laid it out perfectly for you. What's your role while well, you're looking for these levels of engagement in each of the case studies? Who's occupying what roles in, in these struggles? What strategies are imagined to unlock the sort of locked in regimes? Um, how might we speed up change? What strategies are people using to speed it up, to unlock and speed up? What roles are there for different actors? What coalitions might we build? I think that's enough to get you warmed up. <laughs> Have a great week. I want to, maybe I'll end with two quotes. Uh, Jacqueline Thompson wrote in her intro about coalition building across a diverse group. And I thought, well, it applies exactly to our group. And it was wonderful. And I quoted it back to her and I hope uh, you like this. 
Jacqueline said, it takes clear intent to meet those actors, I would say diverse actors, learn their language, recognize they're good, and work beside them. I like that. I like that a lot. That was great. And well, I'm also in a book club with a strange motley crew and we're reading Emergent Strategies by Adrian Murray Brown. I would borrow the book, but there was a great quote and there's some really good practitioner ideas in there. But here's what she wrote. Critique as a participant who is shaping the work. I like that. There's a gentleness to it. So it's critique, but as a participant who's shaping the work. So have fun, shape our work this week, and we'll see you uh, next week. <laughs> Bye.